The Red Car Theory states that perception and focus can shape our reality. Opportunities exist everywhere, but the ability to spot them depends on our mindset. For example, you are in an office and your workmate asks you if you ever spotted a red car while coming into the office. You won't be able to identify if you ever spotted any red cars. But if your workmate decides and says that for every red car that you spotted, he will give you or she will give you $50, you will be able to spot the red car. That means that in this world, opportunities are everywhere, but it is only the time for you to spot them. And also here in poultry farming, opportunities are everywhere. It is not saturated as you think because it is only you becoming the best. It's not about you becoming the first in the game. It is about you becoming the best in the game so that you can be able to achieve and reap millions from this venture. Before we start, make sure you like, subscribe and comment down where you are watching us from. So 2023 hasn't been your year and you are thinking that 2024 will be your year. And here are the tips of how I will give you the best way that you can do so that you can be able to start and be successful in the poultry farming venture in the year 2024. Here is the game. The first thing that you have to take into consideration, you have to really know the type of breeds of the chicken that you are going to keep on your farm. One, are you going to keep the layers? Two, are you going to keep the broilers? Three, are you going to keep the hybrid or the indigenous chicken? You have to know your market because if you don't know your market whereby you will sell your chicken, that will be a very big hindrance to you. Because for the first thing, if you're keeping broilers, you must be near a very urban setup. Because if you're near an urban setup, you'll be able to get a ready market for your products. Second, if you're keeping the layers, layers is a very good breed because you can keep it far away from the urban area and still be able to achieve your profits. Because for the layers, you can keep them in large flocks, then you can be able to sell the eggs to your local area. Because eggs is a form of cheap protein that is available in the world. Thirdly, if you're keeping the indigenous chicken, this depends with the area that you're keeping. The indigenous chicken, which can be also be free ranged and fetch very higher prices in the market. So you really need to know the test of your local customers who will be buying the chicken from your farm. That is the first thing that you have to know when you're starting a poultry farm in 2024. The second tip is the farm location. Where do you want to set up your farm? Are you setting up your farm at home or you want to set up your farm, a very big farm away from the people? First, you have to know the access roads because it can reach a time whereby you want to transfer feeds to your farm. And if there is poor roads whereby you want to transfer feeds into your farm, you won't be able the feeds to reach their farm. The second thing you have to really know, because if you there are bad roads and maybe it has rained, it has flooded, maybe it has swept away the bridge, you won't be able to access the farm and maybe the chicken need medication and also they need the feeds. So you won't be able to access the farm. That is the first thing that you have to know. The second one is the security of the area that you are putting your farm in, the location. Where you are setting up your farm, is your farm located in an area whereby there can be no thieves that are, can come and steal all your investment that you have placed in that area? Is it worth for you to put that investment in that area? That is the second thing, because if you can't take those two things into consideration, that will be a big mess to you. Because for the security thing, you can employ some two guards who can be guarding the farm all through, so that you can be able to protect your investment. And another tip that you can add on to the security on the farm is you, you can have some dogs on your farm whereby the dogs can help to scare away the thieves on your farm. And also if you are doing it at home, also you can keep a dog and make sure your farm is well fenced. Because if your farm is not well fenced, this can attract and can tempt some people even who are not thieves to come and try to steal your investment away. If you are still a newbie and it is your first time doing this, we'll go to the third tip, the poultry house construction. How will you construct your poultry house effectively? The first thing, you have to make sure that your house is oriented in an east to west direction. I will show you a picture of how that is made east to west so that it can prevent the heavy winds from blowing into your poultry house and also prevent the rain from coming into your poultry house because all those winds some of those winds can carry some infectious diseases that can really harm your flock so that is the first thing that you have to take into consideration and also it usually prevents the high heats of the sun rays from hitting directly into your poultry house the second thing on the poultry housing sector you have to make sure that your room is well ventilated because if your house is not well ventilated this can lead to your chicken getting the respiratory diseases because if your chicken can get this respiratory disease you'll be treating those chicken and hence those chicken won't be able to be healed because of the poor ventilation of your poultry house and also for the wood shavings that you're using to your poultry house don't use the coniferous trees the coniferous trees are trees like the pinus the cypress don't use those as the wood shavings are the bedding for your chicken you can only use the eucalyptus which is way better and it has some medicinal value for your chicken and this will prevent your chicken from getting some diseases like the full typhoid and also prevent the diseases like coccidiosis and also the respiratory diseases that need doxycycline to treat them that is the only thing that you have to do on your farm using the proper ventilation you're doing the proper housing and also you're using 
choosing the right bedding for your poultry house so that you can be able to reap big from this venture. The next tip is the labor force. Most people usually don't talk about the labor force that you have to use on your farm. Labor force are those people that you employ on your farm so that they can help you to manage the poultry on your farm. These are like examples. We have veterinarians and also we have the farm boy or the hand farm workers. Because if you don't have those people and you, they haven't been trained very well, they can really mess up your farm. These people must be able to have trained themselves on the biosecurity measures of the farm. You have to have a biosecurity policy on the farm so that these people who are managing the farm, they can't just allow all those other people to come into your farm. For example, if they are visitors, they have to follow the proper procedures of disinfecting and the biosecurity policy that you have kept on your farm. Don't just let anybody to come into your farm because they think that they are friends of those guys that are working on your farm. That is another thing that you have to not really take into consideration because those people really add value to you and you really have to treat them very well because if you don't treat the labor force very well, you'll end up finding out that these people can steal from you. They can just decide to mess up you because they can decide to come with diseases and they can infect your flock and you can really get huge losses on your farm. So that is one thing that you have to really take into consideration. Treat your labor force humanly. Don't treat them like animals. So that is another thing. The next thing is the water. You have to have water on your farm. Because if you don't have enough water on your farm, this can lead to deaths on your farm. Firstly, if you are constructing a poultry house, if you are keeping over 2,000 chicken on your farm, make sure you have drilled a well. Because most of us usually start with no enough funds. So you make sure you have drilled a well. If you have enough funds, you can drill a borehole. First, if you need, you have drilled the well. Because, you know, sometimes here in Africa, we can get the dry seasons whereby the wells usually dry up. So you need a backup water storage. Whereby you can have like a 10,000 water tank. Whereby you can store your water. Or even after you have stored your water, you can get a water bowser. If it is during the dry season and your well is dry and your water reserve is gone. If you have that 10,000 water tank, it will be able for you to store enough water that you can use later during that time when it is during the dry season. You can buy from the water bowser, then you can pour it into the 10,000 water storage backup and that will be able to help you big time on your farm because you know for every one gram of feed that a chicken eats, it needs like two to three grams of water. So that is one thing. And if you have drilled a borehole and also if you have drilled a well, make sure that you get those guys from the county council or those municipality area of your area to come and test that water so that that water cannot be contagious to the chicken that you are giving them so that is another thing because most of these people usually assume that that water is very clean and the chicken can just drink them so make sure you just get those guys and they do the test of it although they have done the test of it then it can be safe for the chicken to drink that is another thing then let's head to another tip which is the health management of the farm the health management this is like for you if you are a farmer make sure you are purchasing your chicks from a good supplier that is a reputable supplier secondly make sure you're vaccinating your chicken these people usually ask me, should I give my chicken any medication? You don't give medication to yourself if you are not sick. Don't give your chicken antibiotics if your chicken are not sick. Because if you are giving your chicken antibiotics and your chicken are not sick, this will lead to resistivity in the diseases when the diseases come and attack them later in life. So make sure if you are giving the medication to a chicken, only give medication to the chicken when the chicken are sick. And make sure if you are giving to medica the medication to your chicken, make sure you are not guessing the drugs. Don't get just a quack veterinarians who try and just guess diseases and give you med wrong medication for your chicken. Because if you are giving the wrong medication for your chicken, this can affect the productivity of the chicken. This can lead to your chicken having standard growth and also can lead to huge losses whereby you can have the loss of life of the chicken on your farm. That is another thing that you have to really know when you are doing this venture. Make sure you are using the correct medication. And if for the vaccines, if you are doing the vaccines on your farm, make sure for the Newcastle disease, for the Marex, for the Gumboro, you have to really follow step by step. Like for example, for the first day, you need to give Marex. Marex is the first vaccine that he has to be given to the chicken. Because Marex, if the chicken stays even more than three hours, if it is out of the incubator, then it stays three hours and you haven't given it the Marex vaccine. The chicken, even if you give it the Marex vaccine, henceforth, it won't be able to penetrate the chicken. The second vaccine is the Newcastle vaccine, which is given on day seven, Newcastle plus IBD, which is given on day seven. Then after that, day 14, you have to give it the Gumboro, day 21, Gumboro, day 28, Newcastle plus IBD, the last water strain. Then week five, the fall pox. Week six, fall typhoid. Then week eight, you can give it the Diwama. Make sure you're repeating the Newcastle vaccine after every three months. That is from the day 28 of the chicken that have arrived on your farm. And there are these good vaccines of the Newcastle disease that can be injected into the body. They are the dead, killed vaccines that can be injected into the body of the chicken. 
for the Newcastle disease because the Newcastle disease is the only and the most deadliest chicken disease that can really attack your farm. The next tip is the equipment that you are using on your farm. Equipment. We will talk about the feeders and the drinkers. Firstly, you have to have enough feeders and drinkers on your farm. If you are using the automatic drinkers, for every 100 chickens, they need one automatic drinker for them to be able to be watered. The second, if you are doing the feeder, make sure you have enough feeder on your farm. For every one feeder, you need 25 chickens to feed on one feeder. If you are doing less than that, you will find out that on your flock, you will be having standard growth, whereby the bigger chicken will be bullying the smaller chicken, and they will be able to eat a lot of food, and the smaller chicken won't be able to grow. Then you will start to complain that this chicken that they sold to me, they were a bad breed, they were not a bad breed. You are doing the wrong things on your farm. And this can also delay the laying of those chickens that you have kept on your farm. Yes, other chickens are eating more than the required amount. So, make sure you are using enough feeders and using enough drinkers on your farm. The next tip is the market of your produce. So, you want to start the poultry farm in 2024 and you literally don't know how to get the market of your produce. The first thing I usually say, make sure you study the market first before you get into the venture. Don't get into the venture, then you want to study the market later on. You won't be able to achieve. Because if you are trying to do that, you are playing yourself with the Russian roulette. You won't be able to achieve it because you will be running your way and trying to shoot yourself in the foot. This is a very tricky business. You have to be really cautious with what you are entering yourself into. It is a good business, but it is a tricky business. So make sure you study the market very, very well. If you are doing broilers, make sure you are getting into the towns and getting those guys that have these fast food chains and you can offer to them the best. You're saying, I will offer to you the best rates in the market. So if you're putting a lot of broilers, even if you're getting a smaller markup, you will be able to get rip big because you are doing it big. After you have gotten the ready market for your produce. Because if for the broiler, you just keep them and keep them, you're just gazing and you're trying to gaze at the moons and gazing at the stars and you're thinking that you'll be able to achieve that dream of becoming a millionaire in the poultry sector. Oh God. You are doomed. You won't be able to achieve that. The poultry sector is a tricky business. You have to be really ambitious and really know your market. That is the first thing. And for the layers, the better thing with the layers is that eggs are a cheaper form of protein. And everybody from the upper class to the lower class will be able to achieve and be able to afford the price of the eggs. So that is the only better part with the, if you are rearing the layers. And for the indigenous chicken, it has a huger market in our area and also for the road runners if it depends with your area because for the elderly population the elderly people in an area they usually prefer to eat the indigenous chicken they don't like these other chicken they usually say that these chicken are like haha <laughs> these chicken are plastic they are gmo but they usually like the indigenous chicken so that depends if you you can do that you can get these eateries that like they are old ones like the swahili dishes like these traditional dishes areas whereby you can sell your produce so that is another thing that you really need to know the market for your products the next tip is records and accounting records and accounting yes you really need to know how much you have spent into your poultry house how much you have spent into your poultry flock and how much you have spent into your labor force so that you can be able to calculate and know if you are really making money out of it because you can be doing this you know in poultry is a very funny business you can be really getting huge sales. Maybe you're thinking you're making a lot of profit, but it's not it's only the gross revenue. You are making a lot of money in sales, but when you try to calculate and try to find out if you are making huge profit from this venture, you'll end up finding out that you have really wasted a lot of your time. What you are really doing, you're just pumping money into something, then you are getting out of that money that you have pumped into, and maybe even a loss. And yet you may not know because maybe you can have another job that is getting you the money, then you're just pumping it to the poultry sector, then you're saying, oh, this is a side business. And for example, if you're doing this poultry business, make sure you are going to your farm like once or twice per week. If you are far off, you can say twice per month. Don't just sit there and say, I have this manager who can manage my farm very well. Oh, farming of poultry is very tricky. It's not like the other kind of farming, like if you're planting maize or you're planting the oranges. This is a very tricky venture. You have to really be on the ground. But if you have this very good manager that you can trust, that is good for you. So you really need to know if you are making a profit or a loss. Don't just be doing that investment. Maybe if you are a philanthropy, maybe you can be helping the people that you have employed, just like a philanthropy way. But if you really need to make lots of money from this venture, make sure that you really visit your farm and really put proper records of your books. Because... That is the only way that you will be able to make money out of this venture. 
So those are the nine tips that you really need to know before you start a poultry farm in 2024. If you haven't watched the video of how to construct a proper stolly poultry house, make sure you click up here. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel.